Sometimes, parents can be overprotective and dramatic. But in this bone-chilling story of a mother's concerned calls to EMS, her fears were confirmed as a gruesome double homicide came to light. What began as a wellness check rapidly spiraled, as every parent's worst nightmare came to life for Mady Vasquez Clark, with the gut-wrenching murders of her son Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub. Toledo 911. Ma'am, mm -hmm. my heart is beating out of my chest. I just got a call from one of my son's friends. Okay. Her phone number, I have it right here. She just picked my husband up to my son and his girlfriend live out at Long Acre Lane. Mm hmm I believe that's Holland. This girl says she was on the phone with my son and his girlfriend, and he was supposed to go pick her up. He was telling her he was going out the door, and all she heard was the phone drop and heard my son saying in the background, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? And she said she just drove by the house, and the house looked ramped All the lights are on. My son's not answering, and neither is the girlfriend. Okay, you said it was... Yes, Lane. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Um, I got heart problems and my heart's beating out of my chest right now. All right, I understand. Oh my gosh. Is she still there? No, she just came by here to pick up my husband, my son's dad, and I'm here with the other two younger kids. All right, what is your name? My name is Maite Vasquez Clark. Oh my God. I have the girl's phone number that he was talking to that heard all this going on in the background. Okay. Her she, parents, she my, said, son's girl, okay. my girlfriend's, uh, my son's girlfriend's parents are out of town. They left for uh, Puerto Rico two days ago. I don't know how to calm myself down. My heart's beating okay. out of my chest. Okay. What did your son tell her? My son was like, hey, Tiff, we're on our way out the door. We're coming to get you. And then all she hears is the phone drop and my son Johnny saying, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? Who are you? And no more, no more answers. That's all she hears. And then she says that she starts getting worried because neither of them are answering the phone. And she goes out there by the house and she sees all the lights are on and the cabinets look ramped. Okay, but you don't have any idea where your son's at? He was there at the house with his girlfriend. That's where they're house sitting for her parents. Okay, but, but she doesn't... He wasn't there when she went over No, there? no. She rang the doorbell and nobody came to the door, nothing. Oh, my God, ma'am. I'm so afraid something happened bad. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, oh. what is your son's name? John S. Clark. Clark is with the E at the end. Is he white, white, or Hispanic? He's white and uh, Hispanic. He looks more white than anything. How old is he? He's 21. And the girlfriend is... Okay, is somebody going to meet us over there? Uh, yeah, my husband's on his way there right now. Oh, my God, my hands are ice cold. My heart's beating out of my chest. I do I need to send you medical, ma'am? Please do. Okay, let me get this call in real quick, and I'll send you medical, okay? Because I have these kids, okay? Please make the call. Her, the girlfriend's name is Lisa Straub. Okay, what's your husband's name? John P. Clark. What kind of car is he driving? I don't know what the girl's car is that picked him up. I'll give you the girl's phone number. The girl, right. Tiffany. Do you know how long it's going to take him to get over there? Probably 10 minutes. Oh, my heart. My God, I can't take this. What's his girlfriend's name? Lisa Straub. S-T-R-A-U-B. What's her cell number? Um, This is his girlfriend. This is not the girl that called me from the cell number. Oh. The girl that called me is Tiffany. I don't know her last name, and her cell number is... Okay, but we can get a hold of Lisa on that number? No, Lisa's with Johnny. That's what I'm telling you. Lisa and Johnny are boyfriend and girlfriend. They were leaving her mom's house. They were on the phone with this girl named Tiffany, the number I'm going to give you, the cell phone number that I'm going to give you. They were talking to her on the phone when all this commotion went down. I thought the I thought the girlfriend called you saying that she was on no, the phone. No, no, not the girlfriend. Her friend, the girlfriend's friend, called me, and she's the one that just came here now to pick my husband. Oh my God, please! I'm praying that my son is okay. <laughs> oh Lord. <sighs> All right, stay on the line and talk to medical while they're on their way there, okay? Okay. Hang on. On January 30th, 2011, in Toledo, Ohio, 
21-year-old Johnny Clark was out that Sunday afternoon, hanging out with friends to watch the Pro Bowl. He had spoken with his mother at 8 o'clock that night, and jokingly said yes, mom, I'm still alive. Raised in a family of Cuban heritage, he was used to his mother Mady's regular check-ins and calls. At 10 o'clock that night, Johnny drove to pick up his girlfriend Lisa, who had just gotten off her shift at TGI Fridays. At the time, Johnny and Lisa were house-sitting for Mary Beth and Jeff Straub, Lisa's parents, who were on a cruise celebrating their 25th anniversary. It was a run-of-the-mill Sunday besides that, as Johnny and Lisa made plans to see friends that day. At 10.41, Johnny called a friend, who remains anonymous, who later told the family and authorities that Johnny was waiting for a friend, Anthony Watson. During that call, Johnny received a call from another friend, Tiffany Williams, who was looking for a ride to come hang out. Johnny and Lisa were going to head out to pick up Tiffany and Zach Burkett, another friend, when things began to take a turn. Tiffany later told Detective Jeff Kozak about the call during her interrogation and a strange interruption that left her feeling concerned for Johnny. Bro, what are you doing? exclaimed Johnny, as Tiffany could hear another male voice in the background. One she did not recognize, Johnny sounded angry and told Tiffany he would call her back. But that call never came. Soon, concern mounted. After that phone call, there were 22 calls placed to Johnny's cell phone, all of them unanswered. Mady was mortified, and it was how she knew something was wrong. As concerned as his mother, Tiffany spoke with Zach Burkett, convincing him to drive her over to the Straub's home to check on them. After looking around, Tiffany claimed she couldn't see anything that seemed off. I pulled the door open and started knocking, and I looked in the side window and didn't see anything. Only thing I could see was that there was a door open at the top of the stairs. Tiffany called another friend of Johnny, who then reached out to Mady Clark, who told Mady of the abruptly ended phone call between Tiffany and Johnny. Williams then drove to pick up Johnny's father, John, and took him to the Straub's home while Mady called 911. Yes, office. Listen, ma'am, I am a concerned mother. My son was in Long Acre Lane with his girlfriend, house-sitting. Lisa Straub lives there because her parents went to Puerto Rico two days ago. I get a phone call about a half an hour ago from his friend, Sharita, that some girl named Tiffany called her saying that Johnny and Lisa were supposed to pick her up at 11 o'clock and she was on the phone with Johnny, my son, when he was walking out of his house, his girlfriend's house with his girlfriend to come get her and supposedly she heard a guy in the background screaming at my son and my son saying, what do you want? Who are you? Get away from us and what have you. Okay, four cop cars were already out at this residence. They're not there, and her car is in the driveway. I want to know where my son's at. Okay. I want to know where my son and his girlfriend are at. I want to know if they got abducted by whoever tried to assault them and rob them. And it's pretty funny that this girl named yeah. Tiffany, which is there right now by the residence, waits two hours to call somebody and report this. Okay. Well, like I said, we were out there. There was nothing going on there. Okay, where is my son and his girlfriend and her car's in the driveway? Uh, how would I know that, ma'am? I need to report my son missing. Okay, um, where are you at? I'm coming up to the residence right now. Well, which which residence? Uh, Lisa's house. Okay, I need an address. Long Acre okay. Lane. And what's your name? My name is Maite Vasquez Clark. This is the street, I think, Mama. Long Acre, this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay, I'm with my cousin right now that's in the military. Okay. I want this girl's plate number before we go anywhere so I can give it to the sheriff on the phone. And they're back pulling in the driveway. I want this plate number. Ma'am, I'm going to give you this plate number, okay? Mm -hmm. That this girl's car is driving. I'm going to stay calm. I am. Will you stay on the phone with me, ma'am, while I talk to this girl? Don't touch anything. Who are you going to talk to? Ask, okay, listen, here's the plate number. That is the plate number of the car that this girl is driving that my son was supposed to supposedly pick up. Okay, is it, what kind of vehicle is it? Um, what kind of vehicle is that you're driving? A Corolla? I have a feeling you set up my son. My son is missing. He's nowhere to be found. Do you want to tell the police what you just got done telling me on the phone? Okay, come here. Ma'am, I'm going to let you talk to her because I have her blocked in uh, Lisa's house driveway. Okay? Okay. Here. You tell them what you I will. Me. Hello? Don't okay, what's? What's going on? Okay, um, my friend Johnny and Lisa, they were supposed to come pick me up, me and uh, my friend, 
from our house. And this was like 11 o'clock. And um, he, um, I was on the phone with his girlfriend, Lisa, and then he hung up. And um, we all hung up. He said they were on their way. And then he, I called Johnny right back because I was going to tell him that um, I was going to run to the store and then I was I would meet them at the house. Well, um, he was yelling at somebody like, um, I'm on, he goes, he goes, bro, who, who are you? And then, um, I, I called, he called him right back and he didn't answer. So I text my friend Lisa's phone and I was like, um, where are you? Are you guys okay? And they have not answered to me or nothing. They have not answered the phone and I've been calling and calling and calling. So I drove out to their house after... Um, my friend's mom got home and, um, nobody answered the door. So I drove back by our house to see if maybe they went to his mom's house and, um, he wasn't there. So his dad called my phone and I was like, do you want to ride out there? And he said, yeah. And I brought him out here. And now his mom's arguing with me saying I set him up and, you know, they're my friends and I'm worried about them. And if I don't have, you know, I'm worried about my friends cause they were supposed to come pick me up and they never showed up. Okay, does anyone have, what's what's the son's name? What's her son's name? Is Johnny, is that his name? Yeah, Johnny Clark. Does anyone have, have his phone number? Yeah, I do, but his phone shut off. Okay. And, um, she, and we was calling, and it was ringing, and then it was shut off all of a sudden. And then I was calling my friend's phone, and I've been texting her, asking her if she's okay, are they okay, because they wasn't answering. And then I texted her, like, last I talked to you, um, I heard him arguing. And then now all of a sudden they haven't picked up the phone or nothing. Okay. Are you out? Are there, is there a couple officers? Where are you guys? Yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some officers out here. Okay. Why don't you go talk to them and they can help you, okay? Okay. I'll put his mother back on the phone. Okay. Actually, I don't need to talk to her. She okay. Just talk to the officers. Okay. Okay. All right. When authorities got to the Straub house, there was nothing suspicious about the home to be seen. No tracks in the snow or signs of forced entry. Besides the TV being on, nothing appeared to be wrong from peeping through the windows. About an hour later, Mady called again at 2.27. Her concern and anxiety mounting with every passing moment. Deputies came to the Straub house once more, searching around the house for roughly 20 minutes. With no probable cause to enter the home, the police left again. But before they did, one officer pulled John Clark aside. As an officer, I can't tell you to go into that home, but as a parent, I would wait for us to leave, then go in. John, Matey, and a family member drove to a nearby gas station and returned shortly after the authorities cleared the scene. John went behind the home, peeping through the back windows, while Matey waited in the car fervently. What John saw through the blinds shook him to his core, a phone on the floor, and next to it, his son Johnny. John Clark jumped into action immediately, running to the front of the home and kicking in the front door. When John entered the home, he saw Lisa and Johnny lying on the floor, with plastic bags over their heads and duct tape wrapped around their necks. Oh my God! You need to get the police out to Long Acre Lane. My son is in the basement tied up of this house. I just saw him through the window. The police were out here earlier and did absolutely nothing. Both cell phones are on the ground and we can see the people. Him and his girlfriend are tied up in the basement. Okay, all right, we'll get them out there. Get them out here. I told them earlier. And they hey, were to me. We need to calm down. We'll get them out there. But yelling at me is unconscious. They're unconscious, ma'am. Oh, okay. You said they're unconscious? Yes! Okay. All right. With cell phones on their body. With cell phones on their body! He's with, with, uh, pants on. He only has pants on! Okay. And their hands are tied! Okay. All right. We'll get them out there, ma'am. Oh, my God! Okay. I need you to oh calm my... down. We'll get them out there, okay? Oh, my God! Please, hurry! All right. All right. We will. Long Acre Lane! I have the address. We'll get them out there. Goodbye! John ripped the bags off, desperately trying to save the young couple. But as he went to perform CPR, he knew it was no use. His son Johnny and his girlfriend Lisa were gone. Whoever did this had been looking and searching for something. With the kitchen and bedrooms upstairs completely ransacked. Cabinets and drawers emptied, Lisa's purse, their closets. All of the contents spilled out onto the floor, helter-skelter. Even the attic had been searched. According to authorities, Lisa's bedroom door was damaged, leading police to believe she tried to protect herself. 
barricading her door shut as attackers entered the home. Since there were no tracks in the snow, investigators believe the intruders entered through the garage. And due to damage to the door leading from there to the kitchen, it's believed that Johnny tried to keep the intruders out. It's believed that multiple people broke into the home since they needed to bust through the door Johnny was holding shut. The bodies of Johnny and Lisa were found with duct tape around their wrists, their hands behind their back and feet taped together. Johnny's wallet had been emptied and left on his chest. An autopsy revealed that the couple died of asphyxiation and that the bags and tape killed them within minutes. The motive appeared to be robbery, but the method of killing perplexed investigators, as stabbings or shootings were more common during break-ins. Some unknown DNA samples were found on the bodies, specifically from the tape, Johnny's ankles, and the inside of his pocket. But the biggest piece of evidence was a sick butt found near the door, tucked away in the corner of the room by the doorway leading to the garage. What seemed most peculiar to detectives was there was no smell, not a hint of smoke in the house or any traces of ash. But, after running it through the lab, the police had two positive IDs on suspects from the cigarette. Sam Williams and his friend, Cameo Petaway. Sam was a frequent smoker and had multiple priors, including assault, domestic violence, and threatening a witness. Williams had also been starting a prostitution ring as well as dealing drugs. As for Cameo Petterway, the authorities did not have enough evidence to connect him to the crime. But for Sam Williams, it was a different story. A cellmate of Williams claimed that Sam confessed to him, including disclosing details about the investigation and evidence found. Multiple incriminating phone calls from prison to friends hurt Sam's case, including Williams saying, I messed up. I'm going to be in here for a long time. Sam also denied ever entering the Straub house, despite the s but tying him to the scene of the crime. Prosecutors had a strong case with all of the above, and Sam Williams ultimately was sentenced to two life sentences without parole. To this day, Williams still denies wrongdoing and asserts his innocence. The murders of Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub are a painful reminder that brutality and tragedy can strike even the quietest of communities. As for the aftermath, it can destroy the lives of friends and loved ones, leaving the survivors forced to pick up the pieces. 